So I'm doing a new computer build today, and I decided I want to do a little bit different. I've done a lot of computer builds that they kind of, they get weird to just make a video about them. So I wanted to bring somebody on. We got Terry Warfield here today. What's he was, up? You were here. What's up? I don't know. A few months ago, we I did that, like, the lens video, right? Two months ago. If somehow you got here strictly with computers, you don't know who either of us are. We're more in the photo video space. I'm going to use this rig for video editing. And Terry, your computer story is what? That it's been a while since you've done anything with PC? I am 38. Don't tell nobody that. But I haven't touched the PC since I've been about 16. Okay. So it's been a long time. And you've never built a computer from scratch, right? Not from scratch. This video is not sponsored, but Asus did send over the majority of these parts. And they partnered with Corsair to send over the RAM and the SSD. So I didn't really pay for much of this, so, you know, factor that in objectivity-wise, however you want. I'll let you do mostly everything. So we're going to start with... That's the, scary. We'll start with the motherboard, uh, and we'll give a couple shout-outs to things as we go. So this one is the ProArt Z790. Would you have said Z790? Z. Z. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm American. Z. <laughs> Creator Wi-Fi. I've used the Creator boards before on my last AMD build. I like them. They got like 10 gig NIC and stuff like that, which is good for connecting to my NAS for the video editing purposes. And they have like kind of a, a really simple, sleek look. All right, open that up for us. We need a knife. Okay, I need a knife. Get I'll a get knife, a, man. I'll get a knife and a Phillips. Bring some coffee while you're at it. Why do you have this Final Destination <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, something about anti-static. I do remember oh, yeah. that part where you needed like an anti-static mat or something like that, right? So yeah, so the, yes and no. I mean, yeah, if you want to play everything by the book, you should be grounding yourself. There's like bracelets that you can wear that you clip to something and you ground. What we could be doing too is we could honestly just take the power supply, set it up here and plug it in, and then just by touching the power supply on a metal point, you're running to ground in the wall. And we turned into Pikachu. That's right. Pretty but here's much. the thing. Lioness and some other people have done videos that show that, honestly, even if you do shock the board with static electricity, most of the time nothing happens. Okay. So it's it's rare for you to shock it, and even rarer for something bad to happen if you do shock it. So we're just going to play fast and loose. We're not even going to ground ourselves. There we go. I'm not worthy. These are the display ports that I was talking about, so you can route them through your, your Thunderbolt ports, which are down there. You've also got, looks like, two USB Type A's. They're 3.2, Gen 2, whatever. I think they're like 10 gig ports. There's a 10 gig uh, Ethernet port and a 2.5. And then four more Type A, 3.2, Gen 2. And then you've got your Wi-Fi antennas and then a bunch of audio jacks. Let me try to guess first. Go for it. Yeah, right. you should. I'm guessing RAM slots. Yep. All right. CPU. Yeah. It looks like there's a Peely on. You want to take that off? Proceed. Let's install the CPU, which is this bad boy right here. You want to figure out how to open that up? All right, so this is the newest i9. Is that what this is? I think they just came out with a... a so this is the 14900K, and I think they just came with a KS. Which my understanding of the S, I could be wrong, is it's almost just kind of like the cream of the crop of the Ks. So all the tiny pins are on the motherboard. So the most delicate part of building a computer, really, is just placing the CPU in. And there's a couple things. So yeah, pinch it on the sides like you're going to, get a firm grip on it, and then flip it over so you can see the top of it. And you'll see that there's a little indicator. It looks like the tiniest little triangle. So you see there's a little triangle yeah. here on the cover? So then that means this needs to go exactly this way. And you should feel that it just kind of like sits nicely in place. And then you just give it a little jiggle test. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so now when you close this down, right? So just like fold it down on itself, it's fine. But it just kind of pops the cover. Oh, up. okay. All right. And we're done here. <laughs> All right. Boot it up. We're done. Let's go home. Next up, we can do a bunch of things, but RAM is right here. You want to do that? Yeah. So how much RAM we put in here? I got I got 32. 16 by 2 in here. Yeah. The only thing that you really, if we were putting in four dims, it wouldn't matter. We just say fill all four up. All right. But because you're only putting in two, that's another RTFM thing if it's your first time build. If you look here in the manual, it shows you the layout of the, the four slots that are there, right? If it's one, just put it in that second slot. If it's two, put it in slots two and four. If it's all four, fill them all up, right? All right so we go in slots two and four. Two and four. It's two. keyed. Uh, the only thing you want to do is you want to open up these first. So push these oh. and then push the top one in. Not enough pressure. And it clicks. And, and if you it, that thing should click back in automatically. All right, there we and, go. And then you just make sure that it's clicked on the top. Uh, one of the most common, oh, I don't know what's wrong with my computer, is they just didn't insert the RAM fully, you know? So stick it in all the way is That's basically right. what we're saying. And I didn't mention, did we mention it's Corsair Vengeance, right? I think was the, yeah. Uh, what a box. That's what it is. You can see it on this Corsair Vengeance. Another thing from Corsair, this is a MP600 Elite. 
one terabyte. You slot it in here and then it just rests over there. So turn this thing. Uh, just make sure that you're you're in all the way. Let's give it a little, little push. There okay. we go. And then you push it down and then rotate that gray thing to kind of like lock it. There you go. I'm gonna be, I'm so scared to break something. Yeah. That's why I'm like not clicking everything in right. So then peel off the that blue. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna make a good peel. Trash, okay. trash peel. And then we'll put it back in. The screws are captive so they don't fall out. And just one here and one over there. <laughs> so what do you think of this case, Terry? <laughs> Oh, Wait a man. minute. We got to hide on this. We got to go on the, the side. The of audio it. is going to be so weird, though. I mean, it's going to be crazy. If, if you can hear me out there, this is the new ProArt case. It's a PA602. I didn't know that they had ProArt cases. So this matches the motherboard and everything. Wait, this thing got wheels on the bottom of it? That's crazy. It does? Yes. You hear that? <laughs> All right, let's lay it down. Oh, so it's got two huge fans in it already. Oh, yeah? Oh, wow. Okay, so what Terry was pointing out that I wasn't expecting is you can see there's two massive, I'm gonna point at those, like, I don't know, maybe 240 mil fans or something, like just, there's a 140 in the back there, you can see here, but these are huge and they're pre-installed. There's a huge dust filter that runs all the way along the bottom and then it says smart filter in the front, so it looks like we'll be good for dust, cutting the dust from coming in. All right, let's stick the motherboard in here, what do you think? Let's stick the mobile in, man. All right, that's for two. This guy's saying mobile already. Mobile. He's already, he's already been indoctrinated into the PC. Mobile. I think we should zoom out. Yep. Okay. Let's make a wide shot on one. Okay, this is a much weirder shot than it was before. Who was that? That's the same teddy bear. You, that was there last time. Yeah, was there last Did time. I smack him last time? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so the goal is you're gonna come in, kind of on an angle like this. You're gonna line up the input output with this box, and then the middle standoff isn't flat. It has a little nipple on it which is gonna clip into that hole. It's got a what? Like a little raised little nipple. <laughs> a little, just a little, little, little nipple. Can you see that little guy there? So you wanna just kind of like oh, yeah. line it up there. There we go. And then we just screw everything in, uh, which the ones that, these ones. So you need nine of those. All right, so power supply, we have a ROG Strix 1000 Gold Aura Edition. Yeah, that's pretty. I like this detail too, if you flip it forward. Yeah. Oh, this is ProArt too. Yeah, they make uh, Pro uh, ProArt GPUs. A ProArt RTX 4080 Super. There's a lot to the ProArt line that I didn't know. Like I thought it was just motherboards. I didn't know they had GPUs, cases, everything. That's kind of cool. Yeah, this is sweet. Oh, that's interesting. You see that? So it's like a whole little lever job here. And there's three tiny little screws right there that all clip into these at toolless design. So yeah, just go in, line this up with there and just make sure that you're kind of slotted in here okay. All right, here goes nothing. Yeah, those two metal tongs will go in this little groove in here. All right, now a little bit more pressure. There you go. All right, so yeah. this is the ProArt LC420 liquid cooler. Okay, so the only thing not to take off is leave that plastic on there, because otherwise this thermal paste is wet and you'll like smear it all over yourself, so we'll leave it on until the end, okay? These are Noctua industrial PPC fans. Noctua is basically like the the top of the line aftermarket fans. Normally, you know, computers just ship with whatever and then people want to go and buy an Oculus. So this is crazy, this comes with it. And they're also 140s by the looks of it, like as big as these, right? So you're getting 340 mil fans on a massive radiator. I feel like a lost kid in the forest right now. Like I have no clue how this is, I think like this. Exactly. We might be in a situation where we want to put the radiator in here and then the fans underneath. The fans are low profile, which is nice, but I don't think you're fitting a radiator and the fans in here. Right. I believe this case has to be made for this cooler. It's machined to like perfectly fit yep. and all the screws are lined up automatically and everything. So one side has a sticker, all fans are like this. One side doesn't. All right. That tells you, if they don't tell you otherwise, on the fan. Sometimes they show you with an arrow, but it shows you which way the air goes. This is going in the top, right? So we're gonna be exhausting hot air because the radiator is gonna have, the radiator is gonna be warm. We're gonna be blowing air through the radiator to cool the radiator off. Mm. We want that hot air to go out the top of the computer. We don't wanna pull it into the computer. Right. So sticker up. Sticker up, yeah. exactly. We're gonna take off the back plate. I like how these things come on and off. So it's basically like an access panel, but I'm surprised they made a whole piece for it. You know what I bet you it is? You could put a SATA SSD. So we take this, we put it on the back, 
and then these are going to come through, and then you have to use your thumb screws, and it's going to screw into these. It's getting hot down here, isn't it? It's this I-9. <laughs> no, they're not <laughs> on yet. That's how, that's how hot this gets. Pull off the plastic thing, line up all four holes. Try not to touch the CPU until you're happy with the hole contact, and then we'll go down and we'll put the thumb screws on. Do a few turns, go to the other corner, do a few turns, and just keep working it down. All right. It's a whole gang of power supply cables. All right. Sheesh. That's a new experience for me. You don't got to do a whole three. They got a. They got a brand new. This must be pretty modern power supply. They've got a. Can we show that to the camera. I'm sure some people are like, yeah, those have been out for a while. Stupid. They've got the like the 12 pin, uh, with the extra little four pins on the bottom for the modern GPUs. It's right into the the power supply because they notice there's a cable for that. So that a lot less cables we got to run. So good. You don't do the conventional method of putting the power supply in and then putting a bracket on. There's this huge shroud. It's two pieces and it kind of like slides and stuff and it looks like there's a hard drive cage under the shroud as well. You got to take that shroud off, put the power supply in, you just screw it in, there's no bracket. And then I guess put the shroud back on if you want to. What do you think? We cut, cable manage, conclusion. All right. So for, uh, first of all, thoughts, what do you think of the first first like build you done in a long time? It wasn't, um, it wasn't as complex as I remember. Um, but that was also 20 years ago. Right. As far as aesthetics, though, I'll say one thing. When I was doing a full pro art build, I was thinking, eh, I'm not so sure. Like, I knew that the gear would be good quality, mm -hmm. but I did not expect it to look this awesome. It's clean. It looks like really good, right? This is mad stealthy. And the fact that everything is pro art, the power supply isn't, but it's behind the shroud, so yeah. it doesn't matter. But it's got a really unified look and it looks nice with the case. And I think we'll put the, we'll put the, the glass on and it's got the same, the same look too. All right. So we got the, the tempered glass case back on. You can see it's got the pro art thing right here. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty, what, wait, 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 wait. Okay. The final, the final, final, final. As Jeremy Clarkson will once say, <laughs> proper. There's instructions too, though. These come off. Watch that not peel off clean. <laughs> yeah, these, <laughs> like, these residue everywhere. <laughs> oh, God. Put it back on. Nope. Nope. Just put it back on. Terrible. Asus. Yeah. This right here is an oversight. That's terrible, man. You had it. You had all the aesthetics. Put that on the other side of the Peely. And then when the Peely comes off, it all comes off. Yeah. And everything is just dropped at the end. Because of a sticker. A little bit of redemption going on. A little bit. Okay, are we ready to boot up? Moment of truth to see if my hard work paid off, because you ain't really do nothing in this that's build, true. Gerald. You ready? All right, we're gonna turn this thing on. I think that's on. I All think right. just go power button. I hear the liquid sloshing around yeah. in there. That's crazy. Oh, oh, we got some. Okay. Bye, us. I learned so much uh, with this PC build, man. Um, you know, I, I knew some stuff, but like going through all the little intricacies and all the stuff that you showed me, honestly, it was, I, I'm grateful to have such a good teacher. All right. That's very kind of you. So now we'll cut to, I don't know, a week from now when I've tested it, but run some benchmarks and stuff. And I'll give you guys an update on how it edits. Yeah. But let's be real. It's mostly for gaming. Yeah. Put, put some, um, some, some hell divers on this That's thing, a, will you? The best part about. Being a video editor on PC, Terry, is that you can obviously game on the same hardware. That's true. And you can get companies to send you video editing gear for review. But it's really for game gaming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's several days later, and I have my report for you here. So I did make a couple changes. One, I added more RAM because when I was, I did a bit of a test. I had Resolve open. I was working on a project. I had Photoshop open because maybe I wanted to edit a thumbnail or, or do a little graphic or something. And then I thought, you know what? Let's open up a couple tabs of Chrome, open up a Word doc, and a couple of things like that, have Spotify running. And when I did all that, I got around 27, 28 gigabytes of the 32. So theoretically 32 is enough for what I do, but I would feel a little more comfortable a bit more. And that RAM kit was on sale. Uh, so I went and picked up another one, threw it in there. Now I've got 64 gigs. I also put the 4090 from my last build into that computer because all of the tests that I ran previously were with the 4090. So I wanted to remove that and just test the processor differences. 
So I added the 4090 and the 64 gigs of RAM, and then I ran the Resolve benchmark for video editing performance. And previously, uh, with my AMD 5950X with a modest overclock on it, I got 2,483 points. Now with the 14900K, I got 3,960 points. That's a significant uptick in the benchmark, but I actually did notice a difference as well in Resolve. Sometimes you get a big sort of synthetic bump in benchmarks, but then when you you know edit, you're like, eh, I don't really notice the difference. What I was noticing this time is just, if you put the playhead at a random position, the amount of time that it takes before it's ready to play back smoothly, which before was only like half or three quarters of a second, you would click on it and, it would, and you'd press play and it would kind of pause and then go. Now it's instant, like absolutely instant. Be doing two as we could on here. Yeah. The only thing, Stop. didn't insert them. This is the new Pro art line. 1,000, but these are You're in all the way. All right. Export times didn't change too much. I also ran Cinebench because why not? On the 5950X, I got around 29,500 points. With the 14900K, I got 39,875. So previously with the 5950X and the RTX 4090, my peak draw was 427 watts when doing a render or some of these benchmarks. Now it's moved up to 495 watts. So this new combination definitely is drawing more power. Now the 495 was also pretty similar in gaming if I had sort of a 60p V-Sync or a 60p cap. But if I let that cap go and just let it render as many frames as it could, I was getting up to like 680, 690 watts for that combination with a new setup, which is kind of crazy. And speaking of gaming performance, I ran Cyberpunk. At 1440p, I could get 120 frames per second locked with no issue. And in 4K, I got about 80 frames per second. And then you can get closer to 100 if you use DLSS to take, you know, 1440 and run it at 4K. That's one though where I just kind of lock it at 60p, 4K 60 solid, bring the temps, bring the noise down, and don't let it take 700 watts. Interestingly though, I felt the same thing in Cyberpunk, even though I was playing it at 4K 60 with my previous setup, the 4K 60 in this one had fewer dips. So the overall performance just felt smoother. It felt like if you like whip the mouse around, you're like, oh, there's no hiccups anywhere. So that almost makes more of a difference than getting higher frame rates. It's just been really, really stable, which has been a refreshing, interesting experience for me. So overall, really happy with this build. I like the ProArt products. I think they look great. The quality of them seems exceptional and I've had, no issues whatsoever. Everything just went smoothly and it's performing excellently. What else could I ask for? Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there was something helpful or useful in here for you. And if not, hopefully you just enjoy the ride of me and Terry hanging out building the computer. Yeah, all right, I'm done.